Hey y'all, it's Jennifer. Welcome back to my channel. Today, I am coming to you with a book shopping vlog. I am about to take some books to unhaul them at the used bookstore and I kind of just thought it might be fun if you came along. I am on the hunt for a few things today at the used bookstore. In general, I am about to embark on a pretty big bookshelf project. I am about to get rid of some furniture that I don't like in the hopes that I can actually have bookshelves in my bedroom and so I can be a real booktuber basically. Uh, it's really annoying to me that all of my books are spread all about the house, but since I don't live alone, space that I have personally is kind of all over the place. Uh, and so I really do want a more cohesive space just in terms of filming. And so going hand in hand with that project means that I'm actually going to need to get some bookshelves. And so I feel like now is as good a time as any to kind of go over the books that I have, assess them, and get rid of stuff that I'm no longer interested in. And so this is going to be step one. Uh, what I'm taking up there today are books that I have been needing to unhaul since at least the first of the year. I don't think I have been to the used bookstores so far this year which is probably great in some ways, probably bad in others. But I do actually have just a couple of things in mind. And when I say them aloud, it means that I'm not going to find them because my used bookstore is on the one hand, just a treasure trove. On the other, you sometimes can find nothing. You honestly don't know what you're going to get when you go in there. And so I'm hopeful that I can find at least at least a couple of things. The main thing that I really want is Barnaby Rudge by Charles Dickens because when I was rereading A Tale of Two Cities a couple of weeks ago, y'all suggested Barnaby Rudge since that is his other historical fiction. I started it on my Kindle just to see if I would like it. It's so good that I really want a copy so that I can annotate. And so I was going to order a copy, but then I thought if I go to the used bookstore, the odds might be kind of high that I can find it. You can often find a lot of classics at my used bookstore, but it's mainly the big ones. So you can find Charles Dickens, but what you'll find is David Copperfield or something like that. So I'm interested to see if they have that. I am also currently reading on my Kindle, and I regret getting it on my Kindle, a biography of Charlemagne. There could be an entire video with the backstory of how I have wound up down the Charlemagne rabbit hole. But essentially, I realized that I know absolutely nothing about Charlemagne. And so I really wanted a good comprehensive biography of him. There has been one written in the past five years, and so that's what I picked up. It's really dense. It's really academic. And I just, in general, wish that I had gotten the physical copy so that I could be annotating it because there's just so much about the society of the Carolingians that is brand new information to me. So my hope is either to find that exact copy at the used bookstore, which I do think is going to be a long shot. It's either that or to find like Einhard's Life of Charlemagne. So some uh, contemporary sources on Charlemagne. We'll see. The other thing that I really want, if I'm going to get new bookshelves, I want some nice copies of Wolf Hall. I want the Wolf Hall trilogy. I specifically think I would really like a hardback, even though those are not what I prefer to read. I think on my shelf, I might want a hardback because I do own them on Kindle. So my goal is to get them used. I've spent the money on them once. If I can get them used because once I unhaul, I'll have credit, I'll be a happier person but we'll see. I also just really want to reread Wolf Hall right now since they uh, discovered that they have Thomas Cromwell's Book of Hours and they have had it for a long time in Trinity College. But those are kind of my main goals. Otherwise, I really do want some more current fiction. I think I might take a peek at their romance shelves. I don't know. We'll just see where the mood takes me. Again, this is always feast or famine, so we will see how it goes. But I thought this might be refreshing. This might be a different bookshop with me than when we went to Barnes and Noble. So let's go.
Well, who was shocked? They had literally none of the things that I wanted. I will say, I think they did have a copy of Wolf Hall, but it was a paperback. And I've since found out because it's the next day, I just went on and I researched this. Apparently, the hardcover just must be a very elusive in terms of Wolf Hall. And I think if I wanna get copies to sit on my new shelves, I'm gonna splurge and I'm gonna get the hardcover set from the UK, I think, just because they're all time favorites for me. I really want them on my shelves. My goal was to get them used just so I could use credit and not spend any money on them. But you know what, I think I will because after all, they are all time favorites for me. But no Charlemagne. I mean, no Charlemagne of any kind. And I could swear that I had been in there multiple times and I thought that they had a really great medieval history collection, but, but I'll be honest, they had literally nothing. And it's a shame because I actually had all the time in the world, you know, to look through the shelves. And I really took my time. I was really hunting for treasures. And I came out with, I think, five things, which is good. I don't want to bring in more than what I unhauled, but... It was really crowded as well, so I didn't take nearly as much footage as I should have, and I'm sorry about that. But I am someone who is squicky about filming in public. I'm really weird about vlogging around other people or filming around other people in general. It is just bizarre to me to talk to a camera when someone is next to you because I have to film clips so many times. I never say the right thing first. And so I often find myself going, um, mm, and rethinking something to say, and that's, weird to do around people, let alone in public. And so I just didn't want people to see me sitting my phone on a shelf to like take footage of me looking at another shelf across the way. It was, it was weird. It was a very crowded day to go, but I'm glad I unhauled there because they had literally nothing. And so I think I made out with what I could find. Sadly, nothing that was on my list was there, but I've said it before and I'll say it again. I don't think you can go used book shopping with any kind of plan because you just don't know what these places are going to have. So I did wind up with five things and let's go through them. The first thing that I picked up was a manga. I immediately went to the manga section because I wanted to see if they had more volumes of Yona of the Dawn, which I have been really enjoying. I got the first edition and I think that's the problem with my local used bookstore and it's probably used bookstores everywhere is that they often don't have volume one or the first book in a series. They'll have like second and third books or volume 20 of a manga, but they won't have what you really need. They didn't actually have anything of Yona of the Dawn, sadly enough, but they had volume one of a manga that I have wanted to try for literal years, and that is The Ancient Magus Bride. I couldn't believe they had this. Now, let's interrogate the price for a second. You knew I was going to say this. $11. I can buy this new for 10 bucks, but I had credit, so no money was exchanged, but still, to me, the price here... The price of used books in general is really baffling to me, but this is really almost in mint condition, so I can see why they priced it this high. But this is about a penniless orphan who is troubled by visions, sold as a slave to an inhuman maid. She is about to begin a strange new life filled with magic fairies and other beings of a fantastic nature. Say no more. I've heard really, really good things about this series, so I'm really pumped about this, and I love, I love the mask. I just love it. I think I got really lucky with this one. I believe they had this mislabeled. They put this in biography and I don't think that's what this book is. At least when I've heard it talked about, it's not been talked about as a biography, but that is Winter in Sokcho, which I picked up for k Tropathon, which is going to be next month, a readathon that is being run by uh, Christy Lewis from Dostoevsky in Space, Tiffany from Beautiful Minutiae, and Yoon from Doki Yoon. And that's basically all about reading Korean books. And so this really called to me in the biography section. I was, of course, looking for a biography of Charlemagne and I left empty handed. But this, I think, was mislabeled. It's in incredible condition. And I would never have gotten this on my own. I think the fact that it was used is really why I picked it up because I think this is really going out on a limb for me. I don't know that this is going to be something that I really like. I think it is about like a resort town on the border of South and North Korea. 
and it's about a love affair, I think. So this was really big last year. I saw a lot of booktubers talking about this one last year. I'll be interested to see how it goes. Again, it does feel kind of like going out on a limb for me, really, really doing something different. But sometimes I've taken risks in the past and they've really paid off, so we'll see. They normally don't have a lot of Herman Hesse at my used bookstore, but this time they had so many of his books. Most of them were not in great condition and they wanted a lot for them. But this is one that I thought looked decent and I actually had never heard of and it is Beneath the Wheel. This is kind of like a dark academia story. I think it's set at a school and the main character befriends a poet. I think it's going to be typical Herman Hesse fun, i.e. it's probably not going to be that fun, but the writing is going to be beautiful. It's probably going to be very lyrical and very philosophical and very deep, which is why I love Herman Hesse and is why he's one of my favorite authors. So this is one I had never heard of, but I am really looking forward to trying it. I might try it soon. I have been sensing that I need to go back to him, that I need to read a Herman Hesse soon. And I think this might be the one, though on the back it is compared to Catcher in the Rye. Not a big fan of Catcher in the Rye. So this might be a miss for me, but we'll see. I really love Herman Hesse. He's one of my favorite authors. This was crazy to me to come across Matrix by Lauren Groff there. I have had the sense I would like Matrix. I have never had the sense I would like Lauren Groff but I have the sense I will like Matrix. I think this is about Marie de France, who was a pretty famous uh, female author of the Middle Ages, and we know very little about her in the historical record. So Lauren Groff has had to take a lot of liberties here, and I am excited to read this because this was a booktube darling a couple of years ago, it seems, and I think it was up for a lot of book prizes. And I think I tend to like kind of award-winning historical fiction. I think it's very lyrical. I think the prose is really beautiful and the character work is typically really great. So I am interested to try this. I would really like to find something that scratches the same itch as Wolf Hall. I feel like I'm always hunting for that. Very lyrical, purple prosy historical fiction. I am always on the hunt for that because those wind up being some of my favorite books of the year every year. And I think Matrix could be one of those possibly. So I'm really excited about this. I don't know if many people who I follow took to this one, but I am excited to see how I feel. Last but not least is another historical fiction that has been on my radar for years and I am so excited about it. And that is The Magician which is a historical fiction about Thomas Mann. And they priced this at $14. I don't get it. I really don't get it. For this to be the nastiest feeling cover of all time, something happens to books when they are transported into that used bookstore and it suddenly feels like they have the back of a sticker all across the cover of a hardback. I don't know what it is and I hate it, so I need to clean this. That's normally what I do when I get these home is I get out my wipe and I start trying to clean off the covers. There's something weird going on over there. But I have heard amazing things about this. Thomas Mann wrote one of my favorite books that I read last year, uh, which was his kind of retelling of Dr. Faustus. Incredible incredible. And so I think it's often really fun to learn more about an author when you were reading their work. I think it really aids their work. And so before I read anything else by Thomas Mann, I really wanted to read this. I know this is historical fiction, but I think it will still give me a lot of context for who Thomas Mann was. So I am really excited about this. I think this is probably going to be my favorite of the ones that I picked up. But this was sadly a pretty low time at the local used bookstore. I only wound up with five things. I feel like though that's good. I didn't need any more. I unhauled a lot and I already have so much more that needs to go back there. I feel really good about that because I feel like I went in and exhausted what they have. So now when I unhaul, I don't have to feel that curious about what they've got going on in there. So I think this is going to be great. And I think it's going to be awesome to get rid of things in order to make way for new books to come in. And so these are the five that I wound up with. I would love to know if you have read them. I would love to know uh, if you have been used book shopping lately, but that's going to be all for me today. I hope you're all having a great week. Happy reading. Goodbye.